SNCC has celebrated its 21st anniversary. Debuting on August 15th, 1992, SNCC was a massive success. It was a blog that featured Nickelodeon shows from 8pm to 10pm, and it would garner a whole bunch of kids and teenagers at their living rooms, alongside with their friends, having snacks, being in their pajamas, wrapped around in their sheets, sitting on the sofa, and just watching some of their favorite shows. Nowadays, it's a huge dose of nostalgia, and people still talk about it to this day. In honor of SNCC's 21st anniversary, and the fact that SNCCiversary is going to be playing on the 90s or all that this Saturday, I'm going to give you a list of the top 10 best SNCC shows. Now, for this to qualify on my list, they have to be shows that featured on SNCC, and they have to be shows that pretty much define the block. These are the shows that pretty much was the definitive shows that everybody can associate with when hearing the word SNCC. So, with that said... Let's get started. Number 10 on my list goes to Taina. Now, Taina, when it first came out in 2001, it was your, you know, it was a pretty typical show, but at the same time, it garnered a whole bunch of teenage audiences, especially women. Now, Taina is a very simple story. It's about a girl named Taina who wants to become a star, and in order for her to accomplish her goal, she goes over to an acting academy in Manhattan. She goes there along with her friends, and she has a rival named Maritza, who says that she can be the bigger star than Taina is. Fairly standard, but still, it was a really awesome show. Now, the reason why this show is really low on this list is because the show didn't last very long. It lasted less than two seasons right before it was canceled. Now, it wasn't canceled because it was a bad show. No, it was actually hugely popular. It was canceled because Nickelodeon was trying to garner a male audience. Their main demographic at the time were teenage boys. So they canceled Taina because it was drawing in too much girls. That is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard of for canceling a show. Nickelodeon, you knew that this show was good and yet you canceled it because you were targeting the wrong demographic? That's stupid! I mean, can, uh, trust me, you're going to smack yourself on the head when you realize that a decade later, there'll be a whole bunch of shows that garner towards more girls than boys. Zoe One, True Jackson VP, iCarly, uh, Zo um, Sam and Cats, Victorious. What the hell were you thinking? Oh, well. Bottom line is, is that Taina is still a really good show. Now, for people who may see it for the first time, they'll be a little bit confused because it's kind of similar to Victorious. I gotta tell you one thing. Taina is a million times better than Victorious. Sure, it's a little bit outdated by today's standards due to the celebrities that they have and the fact that a lot of the music that they played, the R&B and the hip-hop is very late 90s, early 2000s. But other than that... It's still a really good show, and you should check, definitely check it out. It was definitely a really good SNCC program that featured around the early 2000s. Number nine on my list has got to go to Caitlin's Way. Now, Caitlin's Way came out a year before Taina, so it came out in 2000. Now, what made this show hugely different than all the other live-action programs that came out at the time was that Caitlin's Way was a lot more serious and down-to-earth, as opposed to extremely goofy like all the other programs back in the 90s. Caitlin's Way is about a teenage girl named Caitlin who is struggling with her life due to the fact that she is an orphan. Her mother died when she was very young. Her father left them at a very young age. So throughout her entire life, she went from foster home to foster home to foster home. The beginning of the show starts off with Caitlin making a whole bunch of trouble. So when she meets up with the judge after her sentence, she has two choices. She either goes over to live in Montana with her mother's cousin and her family, or she goes over to a juvenile hall. She decides to take the family in Montana, even though that she didn't even know that they existed. The great thing about this is, is that the family didn't even know she existed. The mother's cousin, uh, a woman named Dory, just found out about this just as quickly as Caitlin did, due to the fact that her and her mother were never really, uh, her and Caitlin's mother were not really close. So she didn't even know that she even had a daughter. So, what makes this show really good is that it had a lot of down-to-earth, realistic scenarios. And the characters were actually quite relatable. Now, what got this show really, really good was the fact that it was created by Thomas W. Lynch, who also created a bunch of uh, Nickelodeon programs, such as The Secret World of Alex Mack and Journey of Alan Strange. 
However, if you look at both of those shows nowadays, they don't really hold up very well. Caitlin's Way, on the other hand, does, because it takes a really good approach, and it was really way ahead of its time. Nowadays, it's been forgotten, and I can understand why. Around 2000, a lot of the classic Snick shows from the 90s were getting cancelled. Are You Afraid of the Dark had ended its run. Kablam! ended its run. Um, the, um, all that was officially cancelled around its 6th season right before its revival era in 2002. So a lot of the definitive Snick shows were pretty much gone. And Caitlin's Way was kind of left on its own with not a lot of good standards to follow it up with. Also, there was very little advertisement, so not a lot of people even heard of the show when it first came out. And even then, nobody's ever heard of Caitlin's Way. So if you do want to check out a Nickelodeon show that is really grounded and down to earth, I would suggest checking this show out. Number eight is got to go to Kablam. Now, Kablam, many people who already know about this show, may not know about this fact. Kablam is the first and only Nicktoon that was exclusive for Snick. Kablam is a show about Henry and June who live in a comic book series called Kablam. Now, basically, what the show is is that Henry and June would basically host the show, and they will be featuring different shorts. The shorts included Action League Now, Life with Loopy, Sniz and Fondue, Prometheus and Bob, The Offbeats, and so on and so forth. Now, what made this show really unique was the different types of animation that would go into the shorts. It wasn't the same animation that Kablam! had. It was different. Life with Loopy was stop motion. Uh, Prometheus and Bob was claymation. Sniz and Fondue had different animation than Kablam's did. Action League Now was stop motion with a bunch of toys moving around. This is kind of like uh, Toy Story in a way, except a lot more cheaper and <laughs> a lot more humorous and pathetic at the same time. Uh, Life with Loopy had a little bit of a stop motion kind of look with uh, paper, uh, paper cutouts. Um, and, of course, you know, they, there was all different ranges of animation, and they were all created by different people, and it had different types of humor, and so on and so forth. It was really interesting, and it was really creative. A lot of people, whenever they talk about their favorite Nicktoons, they always talk about the same ones. They talk about Rugrats, Doug, The Ren and Stippy Show, Rocko's Modern Life, um, Spongebob, and uh, uh, so on and so forth. They never talk about Kablam for some reason, and I have no idea why. Kablam is really unique, and in my opinion, it's a very underrated Nicktoon. So I would suggest that you would check it out and see what you're missing out on. Number seven has got to go to The Amanda Show. The Amanda Show, when it first came out, a lot of people kind of dissed it due to the fact that it was nothing like all that. Well, you're right. It is nothing like all that. All that was inspired by You Can't Do That on Television and Saturday Night Live. The Amanda Show, however, was inspired by the Carol Burnett Show. The Amanda Show is about uh, the Amanda Bynes, who was a cast member on all that, and she would be acting different characters alongside with different actors. The skits would include uh, Courtney and Blockbluster, Judge Trudy, So You Want to Win $5, Hillbilly Moment, The Dare Show, and so much more. Amanda was like the main highlight of this show, and it was deserving that she did get her own program, because around season three, it was all about Amanda Bynes. I mean, you couldn't, nobody could get enough of her. At the time that people saw the Amanda show and they saw Amanda's performance, they said she was going to be the next Lucille Ball and Carol Burnett. Nowadays, she's the next Lindsay Lohan, and that's pretty sad. Um, it's pretty low on this list because, just like Taina, the Amanda show was also canceled due to low ratings, and it was canceled quickly. Dan Schneider thought it was going to continue on and on, but apparently it didn't. So af afterwards, then he decided to go back to working on all that for a little bit, and then go on to work on Drake and Josh. Uh, the reason why this is on the list is because, of course, this was one of the definitive SNCC programs of the late 90s, and this was a show that if you weren't a fan of all that, then go watch The Amanda Show. You might be able to see it a uh, much more funnier sense. And also, even though that the skits are a bit hit and miss, there are a couple of them that are really enjoyable to check out. Number six on my list is The Adventures of Pete and Pete. 
Now this happens to be my all-time favorite Nickelodeon sitcom, but it's on number six because even though that it was featured on SNCC, it wasn't a really popular SNCC program. The Adventures of Pete and Pete is a show about two boys named Pete and Pete, who basically live in a small town known as Wellsville, and they go through everyday realistic situations, but with a surreal twist. And a lot of the episodes would include staying up all night, or trying to save the world, or um, just trying to find a lost song, or finding out why math even matters anymore, and trying to have the opportunity to go swimming, even though that the adults are swimming in the swimming pool, and so on and so forth. It's just so many good episodes on this show. Also, the soundtrack, in my opinion, is one of the best soundtracks in any Nickelodeon show ever. You have um, a great eclectic group of bands who play in this show. Unlike today's sitcoms, in which they focus on mainstream singers, or the people who are on the show are basically the singers, The Adventures of Pete and Pete relies on 90s indie rock bands and pop singers. You had people such as Drop 19s and Polaris, which is basically Miracle Legion without one of the main singers. Uh, you had Sid Straw, you had the Magnetic Fields, um, you, uh, you had Apples in Stereo, you had uh, Semi Gloss, you had so many great singers in this show. And some of the songs are incredible. I mean incredible. If you've tuned into episodes one and three of Nick Jukebox, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, also, uh, the reason why I included this show on this list is because The Adventures of Pete and Pete is one of the very few, I'm going to say this, very few Nickelodeon shows, be it live action or animated, that still hold up to this day. It's a show that anybody can get into, especially if they're a little bit quirky and different. If you're the kind of person who doesn't really understand the popular shows that are going on at the time, and you fancy yourself a little bit of a um, surreal kind of person who likes really random yet charming humor, then The Adventures of Pete and Pete is for you. Um, think of it as like the closest that you'll ever get for an independent movie to be a TV show. This is, be this is like Wes Anderson before Wes Anderson got his uh, identity for having movies such as uh, Moonrise Kingdom and Fantastic Mr. Fox. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend that you really check it out. It has great humor and it's still fun to watch. Number five on my list has got to go to Clarissa Explains It All. Now, Clarissa Explains It All was actually the very first show that was featured on SNCC, as it was the first show that would be shown on the lineup. Clarissa Explains It All is actually the very first Nickelodeon show that featured a female protagonist, which will carry on throughout the rest of the years with shows such as The Secret World of Alex Mack and Taina, Caitlin's Way, and a lot of the Dan Schneider programs such as Zoe 101 and Victorious and Sam and Cat and iCarly. Um, what made Clarissa Explains It All really groundbreaking for its time was the way it was shot. There was a lot of different angles to the show, and there was many scenes in which you didn't really get to see as often, such as the kitchen, or such as Clarissa's room, or the living room, or the school, and so on and so forth. It had many variables. Also, Clarissa was one of the very first shows that talked to the audience. It broke the fourth wall constantly. It talked to the audience in explaining about what she was feeling, about how did she feel about growing up and boys and her family, especially her brother Ferguson, who was a bit of an annoying douche. But at the same time, he was a very charming, annoying douche. And then you have her best friend Sam, who is a really good friend to Clarissa, who always sticks by her side. And Clarissa was very different than a lot of the female protagonists that would feature on throughout the later Nickelodeon sitcoms. She liked bands such as Pearl Jam and They Might Be Giants. She loved playing her computer games. She liked dressing up in wacky clothes that were kind of popular at the time but are now laughable. But still at the same time, it has like that 90s charm. And also, you get to see Clarissa progress and change over time. The show starts her off as a freshman in high school and then it ends the series with her graduating from it. Which was nice, because we rarely get to see the characters change and progress over time. Uh, the reason why this show is really high on this list is because, as I mentioned before, this is the first Nick, uh, this is the first Nick show that shows up on the Snick lineup. 
and it was a show that many people still to this day remember. If you didn't remember Melissa Joan Hart in Clarissa, then you most likely will remember her in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and nowadays she's on that TV show Melissa and Joey. And people still remember Clarissa. There's a new book coming out called Things I Can't Explain, and Clarissa is going to be... I'm sorry. And Melissa is going to be writing an autobiography talking about her years being on Clarissa Explains It All. It's it's still a regarded show. And uh, in my opinion, this is one of my all-time favorite uh, Nickelodeon sitcoms. It's not like high um, on my favorites, but still it is one of my favorites. Number four on my list has got to go to Are You Afraid of the Dark? Ah, yes. Are You Afraid of the Dark? Now, most people think that this was the first and only Nickelodeon anthology series to air. Not true. In the, around the 1980s, we had another anthology series called The Third Eye. However, that is not really as superior due to the fact that it was just basically five mini TV series from the UK and New Zealand coupled together to be an anthology series. So... It wasn't a real one. Nickelodeon's Are You Afraid of the Dark was its own thing. It's about a group of kids known as the Midnight Society who gather around the forest and they tell a story. Some stories can range from legends. Some le stories can range from um, ghosts and supernatural spirits and vampires and crazy, unusual objects that do scary, freaky things, and so much more. What really made Are You Afraid of the Dark a great Snick show was that, unlike most of the Snick shows that featured around the 90s, this one was scary. It was thrilling. This was two years right after Tales from the Crypt came out, but at least a good five or six years before the Goosebumps TV show came out. And of course, like around the early 90s, the book series came out, and that right there cemented the fact that kids were into getting themselves scared. I remember long, long time ago, around the um, fourth or fifth grade, when Scholastic pretty much had us in the balls. We had Goosebumps, we had Animorphs, we had Harry Potter. Well, Harry Potter came in later, but you, you get my drift. So I don't know if this uh, intend to your school, but around my school... We used to have scholastic book fairs come in and they would stop by and put in the latest Animorphs books or the latest Goosebumps books. And for the preschool kids, they had the newest Clifford books and everybody would be going nuts over the Goosebumps books. Are You Afraid of the Dark came out before then and it was a show that is still revered to this day. And there was a lot of stories from Are You Afraid of the Dark that are still kind of thrilling. You already know about this on my top 10 Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes. And Kevin already has listed his favorite Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes. So if you're interested, check that out on Manic Expression and read for yourself if some of your favorites are on this list. However, the reason why it's on number four is because the show has not held up well at all. I've already talked about this briefly on the top 10 Nickelodeon shows that should be remade, that the Midnight Society members are pretty bland and forgettable. There aren't a lot of them that stick out. A lot of them are pretty generic, and they don't have a lot of backstory. In fact, they have no backstory whatsoever. The only thing we know about them is their first name. That's it. I mean, sure, there are some styles of stories that is brought out sometimes, but you really have to go deep into it in order for you to understand that. Like, for example, we know that Kiki, a lot of her stories, they have African Americans in it. Uh, Betty Ann's stories mostly f focus on Twilight Zone-esque thrillers. And uh, Gary's stories, they can range from either being thrilling or they have monsters in it. So, yeah, um... But other than that, there really isn't too much into the Midnight Society. And the acting is pretty bad. I mean, really bad. There are some actors that are pretty good. Like, for example, the adults in the show are really good. Like the, the man who played Sardo and Dr. Vink. They were excellent. The kids, however, most of them were hit and miss. 
And some of the actors went on to do a lot of great things. Like, um, did you know that uh, Melissa Joan Hart actually appeared in one episode? And Tira, uh, Tira, I'm sorry. Tia, there you go. Tia and Tamara Mori were in there from Sister Sister. And um, for all you ladies out there, Ryan Gosling makes an appearance on Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. You see, interestingly enough, he was supposed to be one of the members of the Midnight Society, but eventually he was casted as um, just a guest on one of the episodes. So yeah, um, Ryan Gosling makes an appearance there. A lot of uh, kid celebrities do become famous later on, which is actually kind of interesting. But other than that, there's really not much to say about Are You Afraid of the Dark, except that for the 90s, it was a standout. It was indeed one of the most popular Snick shows ever, and I had to have included it on this list. Number three has got to go to The Ren and Stimpy Show. This is the show that pretty much defined what Nickelodeon would be in the next decade, and pretty much saved animation in general. Now let's take you back to the 80s, in which most of the cartoons that featured were based on toys and um, action figures and movies and remakes of cartoons from the 60s and so on and so forth. The Ren and Stimpy show came out and it pretty much blew everybody's mind. The animation was unique. The expressions were out there and in your face. It introduced gross out humor. It had swearing in it such as crap. It was just a huge groundbreaking show which the effects are still there to this very day. Without the Ren and Stimpy show, we wouldn't have programs such as Rocco's Modern Life or SpongeBob SquarePants or hell, even Adventure Time or regular show wouldn't be around without Ren and Stimpy. It is that iconic. And also, the show is timeless. It has that really timeless feel that anybody can tune in and watch. If you love shows that have random humor such as regular show and Adventure Time, you would love the Ren and Stimpy show. Now, um, it was a really, now, alongside with Clarissa Explains It All, The Ren and Stimpy Show was another show that featured on SNCC when it first came out, and it was one of the most popular ones there. This was during the time in which Nickelodeon was showing Ren and Stimpy on primetime, and they didn't know what to do with it because it was just that different. It wasn't Doug, and it wasn't Rugrats. So they decided to stick it in around nighttime so that the teenagers can be able to watch it. But even then, eventually John K. had to leave the show, and then Games Animation pretty much took over, and the, some of the episodes that featured around the later seasons were hit and miss. But there is no denying that Ren and Stimpy left a huge legacy, which makes it at a really high spot on my list. Number two. Okay, now right before I talk about number one, of course I need to get out of the way that the following two shows pretty much defined SNCC. These were the shows that pretty much kicked the crap out of the remaining shows that would last throughout the 90s and the 2000s. You already know what it's going to be, so you probably want to know what are my ranks on these two shows. So, here we go. Number two is Keaton and Kill, and number one is all that. Now, let me explain. Of course, Keenan and Kel was a huge groundbreaking show for what it would define Snick to be in the next couple of years. When Keenan and Kel first came out, it was a huge popular show. It brought back the duo comedy shows that we would see in shows such as uh, The Honeymooners and The Laurel and Hardy shorts and The Abbott and Costello movies and so on and so forth. With Keenan and Kel, they had a great chemistry together. They acted so well together, and some of the episodes are some of the most iconic and classic that you would ever see. I mean, come on. The, you know, the taming of the screw? That, classic. Absolutely classic. And of course, Keenan and Kel lasted a good four years and ended its run with the movies uh, Keenan and Kel Goes Hollywood and uh, Two Heads Are Better Than None. And of course, uh, number one is all that. What can I say about all that that everybody else has said? All that was, without a doubt, the most popular show on SNCC. When it first debuted in 94, people couldn't get enough of it. This was the show that pretty much blew away almost every other show out of the water. If you were not all that, the Keenan and Kel show or the Amanda Bynes show, 
Your show didn't matter. No show during that time period didn't matter. Take a look at all the other live action shows that showed up around the late 90s. Yeah, nobody remembers them. Nobody really remembers a lot of the late shows that came out of the 90s because they were too busy watching Keenan and Kel or all that. So yeah, they deserve to be this high on the list. They are still revered even to this very day. Now, I know a lot of people are pretty burned out on all that and the Kenan and Kel show because the 90s or all that are overplaying it too much. But let me ask you something. Would you like to see reruns of The Journey of Alan Strange, 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd, and Cousin Skeeter? I didn't think so. So, those are my top 10 best Snick shows. I want to wish Snick a really happy anniversary and thank you for all the memories. So... Tune in next time as we talk about the top 10 worst Snick shows. Sure, everything is all fine and dandy with the popular Nickelodeon block, but, but there are a couple of bad weeds in this big garden of beautiful flowers. So until then, catch you later, and I hope to see you around soon. Did you like this video? Well, please subscribe to our YouTube page and check us out on ManicExpression.com where we have a lot of great content, both blogs and videos. And also while you're there, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can be able to catch up with the latest information and the latest content. And while you're at it, check out some of these sweet videos right down here. Thanks for watching.